By now, you've seen the displays at the store for those new environmentally friendly light bulbs, the small, squiggly, compact fluorescents that some of us are using and we're all going to have to switch to by the year 2016. They last a long time, but call this the cost of good intentions. There's something you need to know about what to do when they die. The story tonight from NBC's John Larson. We, we replaced this bank of bulbs here. When Ralph Barton in Santa Monica spent $700 to switch to energy-saving lights, he figured he'd eventually save money and help save the planet. The benefits from an electric uh, savings cost, you know, dollar savings cost, and the, uh, the savings, you know, overall to the environment, I think, are significant. And he was right. The new compact fluorescent bulbs, or CFLs, do last 10 times longer and result in much less greenhouse gas than the old standard incandescent bulbs. And there's a number of them on the market, some of them manufactured by NBC's parent company, GE. But there's a problem. The bulbs contain a small amount of mercury, one of the most poisonous substances on Earth. Break one of these in your home and you've got a problem. When the bulb hit the floor, it shattered. Brandy Bridges called poison control in her home state of Maine, and she was eventually referred to a company that would charge $2,000 to clean it up. I was shocked to see how uninformed ev absolutely everyone that I spoke to. The federal government has an 11-step do-it-yourself cleanup plan that looks a lot like a toxic waste cleanup, because that's what it is. But it has an even larger problem where to put the 400 million CFLs being sold a year when they burn out. Not in the trash, too poisonous. For the time being, take CFLs to a hazardous waste disposal center, like Ralph Barton does in California. We got one I bulb. Hope. And try to take comfort. Energy advocates agree your new CFLs are still overall the right thing to do for the planet. Just don't drop it. John Larson, NBC News, Los Angeles.